A very good morning students in this video i am going to teach you about the factors which are responsible for the venous drainage the veins they have to drain the blood towards the heart and in this condition when the veins they drain the blood towards the heart okay Uh, this is difficult in the human being that means the venous drainage towards the heart is difficult in the human being the reason being that human beings are erect that means they walk on their two limbs lower limbs but in case of quadrupeds they walk on four limbs okay say for example cow buffalo dog cat okay human beings have acquired the er erect posture and because of that okay lot of the blood has to go into the anti gravity direction the blood coming from head and neck okay an upper part of the trunk is okay but then the blood which is coming from the lower part of the trunk or the lower thorax and abdomen the upper limb and the lower limb cannot go against the anti gravity direction hence the venous drainage is always difficult okay and but then because of this erect posture the problem is there but then the body has acquired some of the thing i mean to say facts because of which okay which i am going to teach you just now the venous de- uh, drainage becomes possible in anti gravity direction also now i am moving to the next slide where i will tell you about the factors which are responsible for venous drainage see here the pointer the various factors are responsible for the venous drainage okay most of the veins of as i have already stated that most of the veins of the limbs and the trunk they have to drain the blood in anti gravity direction second important fact which is also uh, making the venous drainage difficult is that the pressure the blood pressure in the veins the blood pressure arterial blood pressure you know is okay 120 by 80 systolic by diastolic blood pressure it is quite a high blood pressure but the blood pressure which is present in vein is roughly around 10 mm of mercury and this low blood pressure in the vein is not sufficient to drain the blood towards the heart in anti gravity direction okay so against this odds the venous return is due to the following factors and we will see these six factors one by one the first factor which is the most important is the presence of the valves in veins okay <laughs> veins which are present in anti gravity direction okay except the veins of the head and neck they also the valves in this adjacent diagram you can see that there is the presence of the valves okay and then the blood flows in one direction only when blood try to re- come back regurgitate then this valves they open up and this the back flow of the blood is prevented so the presence of the valves in vein is very important once the column of the blood has gone above the wall then it cannot go backward it will have to ascend up and up only so this is one of the most important factor in the hmm, venous return okay in anti gravity direction let us come to the second factor which is also very important now for the venous return hmm, is the musculo venous pump there is a mechanism in the lower limb especially in our calf muscle calf muscle means the muscles which are in our leg okay the the calf area okay these muscles are very strong soleus gastrocnemius and other muscles hmm. <coughs> and these muscles they are helpful in the venous return towards the heart because the leg is okay as much lower level as compared to that of the heart okay now understand the mechanism of musculo venous pump the musculo venous pump is formed because of the deep fascia which is surrounding the leg okay very tightly okay like the bandage very tight bandage and this deep fascia is made up of the 
collagen fibers and you will learn later in your histology classes that collagen fibers are inelastic that means this deep fascia cannot be expanded okay under the pressure right so if you stretch the deep fascia you cannot stretch the deep fascia it is inelastic and it forms a tight covering um, over the muscles of the lower limb okay especially in leg and thigh so that whatsoever veins which are present for example see this is a transverse section from the leg region this is the bone for example tibia and fibula just imagine it here and then this blue lining is the deep fascia and this pink area are the muscles so these muscles which are deeply situated along with the bones they are tightly covered by the deep fascia and when these veins which are present within the muscle are in between the group of the muscle okay as seen in this longitudinal section also this is the bone and the blue color is the deep fascia and this is the vein which is present in the within the substance of the muscle intramuscular intramuscular vein so when these muscle will contract okay since the deep fascia cannot expand okay anywhere because it is inelastic it uh, the swelling of the muscle will generate mm, a pressure or tension okay and this pressure will compress the vein that means the muscle when it is contracting since it cannot expand on the peripheral side it will naturally compress the vein seen in a longitudinal section or seen in a transverse section you can see that because of the muscular contraction veins are compressed and you already know that the veins contain the valves so that because of the compression a column of the blood will go up okay and once it will go up then it cannot come back so because of the repeated contraction of the muscle as we uh, i'm mean, say experience during walking running jumping okay then this muscular contraction helps the venous return and that's why sometime the calf muscle or muscles of the leg are known as the peripheral heart peripheral heart because the heart is pumping the blood so this heart musculo venous pump heart then it just pump the blood in the vein towards the heart which helps in the venous return so it is said that okay while you are at rest your muscles are not contracting so that you should not sit for long time at one single place okay in between you should get up and move your legs okay or walk for a short distance so the contraction of muscles will be there and the venous pressure hmm, i'm mean, say venous return will be achieved that means those people who are sitting for long hours okay they may get the blood clot so it is said that those people who are traveling long distances okay 10 hours 20 hours uh, in a plane um, they are advised to walk in the in between okay to walk so that the musculovenous pump becomes active because when you are resting muscles are not contracting and that's why the venous compression will not be there so the vein will not return this will prevent the blood clotting okay and help in the venous return okay help i hope that you have understand the mechanism of the musculovenous pump okay the third factor which is helpful in the venous return is the presence of negative pressure in thorax during inspiration when we inhale the air in our lung okay this is due to the sucking of the air in the pleural cavity where the lungs are present there is a negative pressure which sucks the air in the tracheal tree bron i mean say bronchial tree and then the air goes in our lung alveoli now <coughs> this negative pressure at the same time when inspiration is taking place we are sucking the air or inhaling the air at the same time is also sucking the blood from the great veins inferior vena cava to towards the heart that means in the right atrium of the heart the blood is also sucked along with the air sucked in the lung so this negative pressure is a third important factor in the venous return okay 
The fourth important factor in the venous return is vena comitantis. Now this vena comitantis is shown in this diagram. A artery is accompanied by two or three veins in the same uh, sheath that is neurovascular sheath, fibro fatty sheath, connective tissue sheath. In this diagram you can see that the three veins which are also interconnected with each other, okay, they are surrounding to an artery. Okay. This arrangement of the veins around an artery is called as vena comitantis. That means veins are accompanying or hmm, coming and going along with the artery. But the blood flow in the artery is in opposite direction as compared to that of the vein as it is shown in this diagram. But see that while the arterial flow is taking place, the pulsations are taking place. So when the beat comes, okay, when hmm, the artery expands at certain places, okay, then this pushes the vein, okay, which are just very closely surrounding to the artery. And this pushing of the veins because of the arterial pulsation again, okay, pushes the blood in one direction above the valve and once it has gone above the multiple valves which are present it cannot come back. So this mechanism of the vena comitantis as you will see this presence of vena comitantis in most of the deeper arteries in the limbs okay in upper limb as well as very common in that of the lower limb. I hope that you have understood this mechanism of venous return by the vena comitantis. The fifth factor which is responsible for the blood flow is the uh, blood pool in the capillaries and vein. All the time heart is pumping the blood into the artery, it is going into the capillary, sinusoid and coming to the venules and veins. Ultimately the blood is accumulating in veins and this pooling of the blood has some pressure as I said and it pushes the hmm, remaining blood in one direction, okay, in one direction. So this factor also helps in the venous return. And the last factor which is helpful in the venous return, though the venous blood pressure is very less, okay, is still some venous, I mean say some venous return is because of this uh, venous blood pressure. So I have explained the factors which are responsible for the venous return. Thank you very much for watching this short video.